live life free, happy, and unapologetically. God is going to do it by himself, so I won't question how it got done. I will know it was God and no one else. The growth that I experienced in 2022, it was nothing but the power of God. When you're true to you, there is no limit to what you can do. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored podcast presented by CC America, also known as Confidence Centers of America and hosted by Tamaria Jordan. This is a show designed to help you build your confidence, increase your faith and get mentally fit to overcome any trials and tribulations you may encounter. Through personal testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, Tamaria and guests seek to inspire and uplift you. This message is delivered by us, CCing you on lessons learned in hopes of encouraging you regardless of where you are in life. Enjoy the show. Good morning and welcome to the Confidence Restored Podcast. I am your host, Tamaria Jordan, and today we are talking about 2023 and living your life unapologetically. So I am really excited to be here with you all this morning, grateful to see another year and considering how trying the end of last year was, I am so grateful for this opportunity to be before you yet again, because the fact that we have breath in our body is enough for us to be grateful for today. And for all those that we lost along the way who have either returned back to God and or who have stopped off on this journey called life, meaning they're no longer in our lives for whatever reason. Maybe they were just there for a season. I just hope and pray that you find comfort in the beauty that is life, the experiences that you've had and the joy. So as I think about my grief journey, sometimes we think that grieving only consists of the people that we lost who have transitioned back to God. But sometimes it's also relationships or situations that are no longer a part of our lives. So it can be hard to deal with that in terms of losing people um, through situations. Even when you think about changing a job, it's a major change for many of us. And so when we think about 2023, the reason I titled this Live Life Unapologetically is because so often many of us are living our lives for and through other people. And what I mean by that is sometimes we allow what other people think to overshadow what we know about ourselves, what God has called us to do. And so when I think about the year 2023, I think about freedom, freedom from opinions, freedom from worry, freedom from doubt, freedom from allowing other people and or situations to control how we live and what we do. And as someone who prides themselves on being an inspiration to other people, I realize that there's things that I have personally gone through in my life that has made me the way that I am. And I don't regret it. I am grateful for every lesson, for every moment. And so I looked back at my journal on January 2nd, 2022. And what I wrote was last night, I went on a date with God to Outback. He wants to isolate me to remind me of who I am and whose I am. So I will never let a person, man or woman, keep me from my calling. God is going to do it by himself. So I won't question how it got done. I will know it was God and no one else. And what I will say is the growth that I experienced in 2022, it was nothing but the power of God. Because when I think about the amount of grief that I experienced through losing loved ones who have transitioned back to God, from losing people through life situations, changing a job. There were so many things that were representative of transition. And in those periods, oftentimes you might feel isolated because it's different. It's not necessarily something that you know what to expect. And so when you think about life and how it can be unexpected, it brought me to this. As we walk into a new year, being grateful for the gift of life, the blessing of time, and the opportunity to live life free, happy, and unapologetically. So I want to encourage you and others to just be true to you. 
because I realized, and I've posted this before, that when you're true to you, there is no limit, no limit to what you can do. And so ironically, I did some research yesterday as I started the new year and I thought about opinions. And when we think about the opinions of others, oftentimes it will make us feel like there's something that we're missing sometimes or something that we should stop doing. Sometimes it encourages us to start doing something different. Sometimes it it doesn't have an impact at all, but I think it really just depends on the person. And so one of the things that I researched, there was actually in the Journal of Personality, Personality, excuse me, and Social Psychology by the American Psychological Association, there was an article and it talked about opinions. And it said that repeated exposure to one person's viewpoint can have almost as much influence as exposure to shared opinions from multiple people. In some cases, it can give the listener a false sense that an opinion is more widespread than it actually is. And so when you think about the opinions of others, that is oftentimes what keeps us from living unapologetically. We start to live life on other people's terms and under their thumb. And I think about many situations I've encountered, and I'll share one in particular. But I remember there was a point in my career where I felt really down. I felt like I was being beat up constantly because of situations and circumstances. And no matter what I did, it just felt like it was not enough. And I remember working for a manager who didn't necessarily support me the way that I felt a manager should support their colleagues, especially if you're someone who works hard, you know, goes in every day, tries to do a good job, tries to make the manager look good. But I don't know if it was jealousy or what it was, but she just continued to beat me down. And for a short period in my life, I believed that her opinion was the shared opinion of everyone around me. And it wasn't until I got a new manager that I realized, aka a new mindset, he brought in a a fresh perspective It wasn't until I reported to that manager that I realized that that individual had their own struggles that probably had nothing to do with me, but at the same time, she may have felt that it had everything to do with her. And I don't know what it was driven by, jealousy, who knows? I don't know her thought processes because I'm not her. But what I do know is that her limitations that she placed on me in terms of how far I could go, how high I could climb, what I could do. I allowed her limited thinking to impact my personal view and or perspective about who I was because it appeared as though that was a shared perspective. And when my new manager came in, they said, why do you feel this way? And I said, well, I keep hearing X. And he said, well, that's interesting because you are one of the top rated employees in the state for the results that we were looking at. And I thought to myself, really? How could that be? Because that was not the narrative that I heard. So once he made that switch in terms of he became my manager, it was a perspective shift. It was a mindset shift. It was a mindset shift for me because I was no longer under that leader. And so when I would no longer report it to that leader, I realized that her perspective was not one that was shared. It was one that was continually pushed on me. And much like what it says in that article, if you continue to hear the same thing more than once or often, you will start to believe, even if it's only one person's viewpoint, you will start to believe that it is shared about you. And it works both ways. It could also be a good thing. So you notice in that example, I gave that example because it shows both sides. It shows, or it illustrates, I should say, it illustrates what happens when you hear negative feedback and similarly what happens when you receive positive feedback. But what I want you to know today is that even though having support is awesome and having someone to validate your perspective, your thoughts, it's not always necessary. And so because sometimes we feel the need to include a lot of people in our lives, in our decisions uh, regarding what we do and what we accomplish, 
we may start to listen to those perspectives and start to believe some of those things. But then last night when I was jotting down my notes for this particular show, something came to mind. And I thought to myself, oh, this is interesting. And when I think about the enemy, Satan, I think about similarly how his opinion can limit what we think about ourselves. Hence the reason I titled this show Confidence Restored, because there are several examples in my life where I felt like my confidence was being destroyed or that the enemy was out to destroy it by any means necessary. And that included sending people, situations, and life events to kind of knock me off track. Similar to Job, he asked God, could he test him? And God said, you can test him, but you can't kill him. So for someone out here that's going to listen to this show or that's listening to this show, he can test you. He can't kill you. He doesn't have that kind of authority. And he wants us to believe that he does. And similar to the opinions of others, if you hear something long enough, even if it's a thought, the impact, you will start to believe that it is true. But then also you might believe that other people believe it to be true too. And so when you think about the enemy, he whispers lies to us about who we are, about what we can do, about who we've been, about who we can become. And if you believe and hear those things long enough, because the word also reminds us to take every thought captive. And so when those thoughts come, we don't have to keep them. But many of us think that, wait a minute, where did this originate from? Did this come from me? Surely it didn't come from the enemy. But sometimes there are things that we may think that may not be what is pure, what is holy, what is of good report. And then we have to take those thoughts captive. We have to take our mind back. We have to take our power back. And we say, no, I'm going to live a joyful life. Yes, I'm going through my grief journey, but I'm not going to give up. Yes, I've had my struggles, but I'm not going to quit. Yes, I've made some mistakes, but I don't have to stay there. And so another example that I'll share is I heard for the longest time that I was just big. Like people would say, oh, you're so big. And when you think about it, it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? You're so big. Honestly, a lot of them were probably talking about my height uh, because I was taller than most people, but I kept hearing I was so big. And so for a long time, I honestly thought I was big. And now I look back at my pictures and I wish I was that same size, but because I had the mindset that I was so big, I thought that I was bigger than I actually was. And because there were people who repeatedly said that to me, I honestly believed that other people had that same viewpoint, but then I also started to adopt that viewpoint about myself, which led me to struggle with my self-esteem. And so when I think about self-esteem, I think about life. There's a lot that we encounter in life and things will beat us down just because we go through situations and it's hard. And for anyone that says, oh no, you know, I go through everything and I always have a smile, good for you. I can tell you that's not my testimony. I cry from time to time. You know, I am currently still in a grieving season. And I I just know that it's the power of God that's holding me and keeping me together even in the midst. Because after Christmas, I um had an opportunity to touch my grandmother's ashes as she passed away in December, if you listened to the last podcast episode. And it was surreal because I thought to myself, I don't know if I would have had the strength to do that a year ago, two years ago. And with the number of people who died and transitioned back to God last year, I just... I'm sitting here in amazement because I think to myself, would I have ever had the courage to do that before? But when I touched her ashes, I said, she's okay. Because God called her home. It was her time to go. And it was hard. But I thought to myself, wow, I've grown so much because that would have really broke me down in the past. And it did. I cried initially because 
I received a gift over the holidays of a, a necklace where you could put um, ashes in it. So I was going to put my grandmother's ashes in it, but I, I didn't um, end up putting it in there because the way they had the bag tagged, we decided that we would wait and go back to the funeral home. But I thought to myself, wow, I've come a long way. But what the enemy would want me to think is, I want you to be afraid of death. I want you to allow this to overshadow the good that you have in your life. I want you to dwell on the fact that she is no longer with you and your other family members are no longer with you. I want you to believe that you are not going to live a long life, that you are not going to fulfill God's purpose in your life because it's been rough, but I just thank God for his grace and his mercy. And so when you think about life experiences, our beliefs, I've talked about the job and that experience, the same opinion, good or bad, can impact how you feel about yourself. When I kept hearing the same message about my size and even the fear that I've been trying to conquer as it relates to death and knowing that even though I may not be ready to go, And I pray that I have many, many more years left, that the fact that we lost so many family members doesn't have to allow my life to stop. And so when I thought about 2023, all I kept thinking was live life unapologetically. And so many of us live our lives for other people. And I think it's time out for that. It's like, wait a minute, why not live it for you? Because we only get one life. And if anything that 22, the year 2022 taught me is that we only get this one life. We only have the time that we're here and we don't know the day nor the hour. So why do we live our lives for other people? Why do we allow other people to dictate so much of what we do? And then when we think about, when we look back, we will be the ones with regret. And so for me, I like to share my testimony because I know that it has also brought me so much healing. The fact that I started this show in the midst of a miscarriage, again, grief. I started it the week after I found out I was all clear from that situation. And so when I look up the word unapologetically, the dictionary refers it or refers to it as in a way that does not accept fault or shows no regret or shame. And I don't want anyone to get confused and think that I'm saying that you should live life and not, when you make mistakes, not to have shame about it or not to feel bad and repent. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is living life where you don't live with regret, that you don't allow what other people say about you and or to you to dictate how you live. You have a right to live happy. And I posted something around the holidays because I saw a lot of people giving Tia Uh, Maori, a lot of grief because her and her husband are divorcing. And they gave her so much grief because in a moment, a 30 second clip or a minute, she smiled and she was happy. And that upset some people because they were like, how was she dancing around and smiling? And someone said, and they used some expletives, but they were like, no one is that darn happy in the middle of a divorce. And it's probably true. She probably isn't happy. But at the same time, for that moment, she gets to escape the reality that is life. And I know for me, I utilize social media as an escape. It Sometimes it's helpful. And with the number of deaths that we had from November 12th to December 12th, six, at this point, I'm like, I really, I can't have regrets about living my life because I don't know when it will end. And if I live my life for other people at the end of my life, when I get to my creator and God says, what did you do with the gifts I gave you? What did you do with the talents I gave you? Did you bury them? And that parable, when it talks about the talents, the person who buried their talent, God said, turn away from me. It wasn't the ones who multiplied it, the ones who used it. And so in the midst of my grief, I want to use my gifts. I want to use my talents. So for any family members or anyone else that might judge the fact that I appear happy in a moment, in a glimpse, 
it it doesn't mean that I, I'm not grieving. It doesn't mean that I don't cry. But social media, you see a glimpse of someone's life. And I felt like with Tia Maury, people judged her so harshly because they're like, they saw her dancing for a minute and assumed that she was dancing all day. They saw her smiling in a moment and assumed that she never had a down moment where she cried to herself thinking about the fact that now her family is falling apart. And so when you think about life experiences, you think about the things that we go through. For me, it's been a grief journey. So when I think about grief or death, when I lose a loved one, I have often struggled with that fear because it's something I've seen since I was a kid growing up in a neighborhood where a lot of people are your family and it's a close knit community. You get close to people. And then when they go, you think, wow, that could be me or that could be my family member or, you know, your, your thought process shifts. And I went to my first funeral at seven. And unfortunately the funeral was for a four-year-old, my classmate's sister. So imagine as a child, seeing that, the impact that it has on your life, and also how you view death. So I'm not going to lie. I've been afraid for a long time. Shoot, <laughs> like 31 years. Uh, when I think about it, because before that, I don't know if I had that amount of fear and then surviving an F4 tornado where there were people who died. I thank God I'm still here. Being in eight car accidents, I thank God I survived. I thank God I'm still here. And so when you think about those things, you're like, okay, do I have to accept those limiting thoughts or those beliefs or the things that the enemy wants to put in my head to make me stop living? Or do I want to keep living? Do I want to live happy and unapologetically? Betrayals. The enemy wants us to get angry or get even, but do them one better. Let God handle it. He showed me that last year. There were people who literally tried to get me fired for a lie, something that they created. They tried to get me fired and the truth came out after I left. I ended up getting a new job. But even in the midst of that, the truth came out because what they thought they were going to do to destroy me backfired because the truth was revealed. And God revealed to me later on in the year, I was going through a different situation and he said, Remember that situation where you were so down and you were feeling angry and upset? And and I was, I'm not going to front. I was very irritated <laughs> with the, the situation. It was very frustrating. And I thought to myself, how in the world did this person like get away with what they were doing for so long? But God, he was like, no, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay because I've got this. And I think about the fact that like with the Red Sea, he sent, Pharaoh went after the Egyptians, but God, even though he was chasing after them, God let the waters cave in on the Egyptians who kept chasing the Israelites when they were getting free. God knew they, that they were going to give chase. He hardened Pharaoh's heart, but he also provided a way of escape. And he said, just keep facing forward. Just keep going. So for me, I have a lot of times where it's hard to keep going, but even in that situation where someone tried to get me fired, it backfired because they kept giving chase. And God said, touch not my anointed. And that person could have lived a, a be better life or a different life, but they allowed jealousy to cloud their vision. And so then they continue to give chase. And so what happened as a result was their own fault. They did it to their detriment because of whatever reason. And I can't, I can't tell why they did it. I don't know. I don't know what their thoughts are. I don't know what their mindset is. All I can look at is, is their actions and their actions showed that they did not have a pure and good heart. And they would smile in my face, but behind my back the whole time, they wanted to get rid of me. And so God was like, the same way I let the truth come out in that situation, I will let the truth be revealed in this one as well. And so I've given a few examples in terms of that. And then failure. The devil wants us to believe that we will never be able to come back from where we've been. And I am 
in a place right now where I'm like, okay, I will be restored. It's 2023. I am going to live happy and unapologetically. And I encourage you all to do the same. Um, I am grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my friends. And shout out to my Aunt Michelle who is tuning in. She is listening this morning. I appreciate you. She has been so much light in my life. And I should say she has brought a lot of light in my life. And I am so grateful for her because... I remember when we started talking again more frequently, I realized how much of life situations I let beat me down and how much I let other people's opinions hold me back. And God is like, later for that, you see I'm rhyming. I like to rhyme. So (laughs) it's something I do for fun, but I do. I think about life and I think about how many people don't live life because they're worried about what other people may say or what other people may think. And I'm tired of that, honestly, because at the end of my life, God is going to ask me, what did I do with my gifts? He's going to ask me, what did I do with my time? He's not going to say, oh, did they get mad at you because you did this? Did they get mad at you because you smiled today? I may have been crying for three hours. They weren't mad at me then, (laughs) you know? And so it's so funny. Um, I think about life and situations and even with social media, how many people look at that one moment and judge individuals off of that moment. And so I remember in 2013, when I made the decision to move to Maryland, it was all about faith. And I remember reading Hebrews and it talked about the fathers of faith, but this podcast is based on Hebrews 10 35 that says, do not throw away your confidence because it will be richly rewarded. But when you look at Hebrews 10, starting in verse 19, it's talking about a call to persevere in faith. And what I'm doing right now, I will tell you it is persevering in faith because some days I don't feel like getting up. Some days I don't feel like going forward. Some days I don't really feel like doing much of anything, but I'm persevering in faith. And so starting in verse 19, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. I am grateful for my family and my friends who encourage because I know that we need to lean on other people and God allows other people to come into our lives for that. And sometimes he also allows other people to leave because he knows that their intentions toward us may not be good. Verse 26, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said it is mine to avenge. I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Verse 32, remember those early days, earlier days after you had received the light when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. Verse 35, it will be richly rewarded. Verse 36 reminds us, 
You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. And if we have faith and are saved, then we know that we will see our loved ones again. We know that this is not the end. We know that if we have faith in God and we can trust in his word, that we will see our loved ones again, that we can live a life full, happy, unapologetically, and that on the other side of eternity, there is a future, that everything that ends isn't an end. And so one thing that I wrote before I wrap up today um, is that it's 2023 and I will keep sharing my testimony because in the end, God gets the glory. And that's how we defeat the enemy. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And when I read that in Revelation 12, I thought to myself, thank you, God, for that reminder, because this place is temporary. But what we are working towards is that which is everlasting. And even though I have my moments, I am going to live and share my testimony because the word also reminds us in Revelation 12 that the enemy knows his time is short. So the enemy is trying to make us doubt. He's trying to make us shy away from sharing our testimony, shy away from sharing our truth. He wants us to sit in the corner and be depressed. And I saw a video yesterday and it really resonated with me. And there was a pastor and he pretty much said, I am not going to allow other people to stop me from being happy because he said, you know, you weren't upset when I was sad. I mean, you, you know, you weren't mad when I was sad, but you're mad that I'm happy. And I thought about how many people don't want to see other people just be happy. And I don't um, know his name. I want to see if it says who, who he is, but I'm just going to tell you what he said, because what he said was so powerful. And I think it goes with this theme of living life unapologetically. He said, it's a new season. I will not apologize. I don't need you to agree. I am walking in the fullness of everything God has for me. I'm not apologizing for being happy because I didn't apologize when I was in pain. I'm not going to apologize for being free because I didn't apologize when I was bound. I'm not going to apologize for living because I didn't apologize when I was knocked down. If I look happy, it's because I am. This joy, well, actually he said it's because I'm his. <laughs> but I loved it. And he said things that used to bother you won't bother you anymore. And that's when you know you are in a new season. And I said, wow, this is great. This is a whole word. It was posted uh, by Ebony Braden on uh, Facebook. But again, I don't know who the pastor is, but that message is powerful because it's amazing how a small opinion can make us think that it's shared, but then we start to adopt it as well. And what I encourage you to do is I don't want you to live life depressed and upset or angry or frustrated because I don't, I know I don't want to live that way. And I'm like, okay, thank you God for freedom because I want to live free. I want to live happy. I want to live unapologetically. And so I am grateful for a new year. I'm grateful for a fresh perspective and attitude because I want to live life on my terms because as we know, we don't know when our number will be called. But what I do know is that our ancestors who passed on, our loved ones, they don't want us to give up. They don't want us to stop because guess what? They experienced it too. And they said, I have to keep going. There's someone here that needs me. And I'm getting emotional because I'm like, thank you, God. Thank you for their life. Thank you for their legacy. Thank you for the opportunity today to keep going, to encourage others, to share, to smile. And that's why I said at the beginning of the show, I have my moments. I People may see me dance. They may see me smile in a moment and say, oh, she has it all together. God has it together because mm -hmm, let me tell you. <laughs> so I am grateful that you all tune in week after week. We hit over half a million views uh, probably about a month or two ago. 
lifetime views on this channel. And I am just grateful that it's blessing someone. It may not be for everyone, but it will be for someone. So on that note, I hope that you live your life happy and unapologetically in 2023 and keep on keeping on. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast by CC America. We are grateful that you tune in week after week and join us for testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and let others know that you are listening to the Confidence Restored podcast. You can also now buy us a coffee to show appreciation at buymeacoffee.com forward slash CC America. Until next time, be blessed.